What's up guys, Smiles here with 95 mac and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. As you might know, Apple just announced the brand new MacBook Air and MacBook Pro running the new M2 chip. So today I wanted to do a video comparing these two laptops to help you guys make the right decision when it comes time to ordering these machines later this month. Before we get into comparing these two machines directly, let's firstly talk about the M2 processor and what makes this new chip more powerful and efficient than the outgoing M1 MacBooks. Firstly, the the M2 chip now comes available with a 10 core GPU option, but you've still got the eight core CPU setup with four efficiency cores and four performance cores. But Apple claims you're getting 18% faster CPU performance, 35% faster GPU performance, and 40% faster neural engine performance. You're also getting 50% faster memory bandwidth, which is probably going to be the biggest real world benefit of M2 over M1. Probably the biggest feature that I'm excited for is the new media engine in the M2 chip that'll support eight K H.264 and HEVC video. So in addition to a certain iPhone probably getting the 8K video treatment later this year, you can definitely expect improved editing performance for 8K content shot on cameras like mine. M2 now comes with up to 24 gigabytes of memory, which is a first ever for the MacBook Air. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I'll be opting for the Air over the equivalent MacBook Pro, but I'll get a bit more specific on that later. In addition to the 24 gigabyte of memory option, you've still got the same base storage of 256 gigabytes with an option of two terabytes as a maximum. And in addition to offering either a 30 watt or 67 watt USB-C port, there's now a 35 watt dual USB-C port option, which could be convenient for charging your iPhone and your MacBook simultaneously. As opposed to the new MacBook Pro, the new MacBook Air will exclusively come with a binned version of the M2 chip that has an eight core GPU option as the base model, as opposed to the 10 core GPU option that'll come standard with the new 13 inch MacBook Pro. But other than that, that's pretty much all you need to know as far as M2 goes on these machines. And a lot of people are wondering if M2 is supposed to be more capable than M1 Pro, Max, and Ultra. And no, that's not the case at all. This is simply meant to be an upgrade to M1 in the start of the next chapter in Apple Silicon for Mac. So later this year, we should definitely expect an M2 Pro, an M2 Max, and perhaps an M2 Ultra chip within a computer to launch. Now let's firstly go over everything that's new with the MacBook Air outside of the M2 chip. And that that first one is obviously the design. Just like all the leaks and rumors predicted, we've now got a MacBook Air that vastly resembles the current 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. The tapered edge design in the MacBook Air is now a thing of the past, and they've once again managed to make the MacBook Air thinner and lighter with the M2 model. It's now 0.1 pounds lighter than the M1 Air and 0.44 inches at its thickest point compared to 0.63 inches at its thickest point on the M1 Air. And as far as we know, this Air is still fanless, so the M2 chip will be just as quiet and even more portable. Of course, part of having a new MacBook design means having a notch. And so we've got that here on the new Air, but the display itself is also slightly bigger now. The M2 Air has a 13.6 inch display with a max brightness of 500 nits versus the M1 Air's 13.3 inch screen with a max brightness of 400 nits. And in that notch, you've got a new 1080p camera, which is an upgrade from the M1 Air 720p camera. So you should expect this camera to perform just like the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, as well as the 24 inch iMac. You've also got a slightly larger battery in the M2 Airs. This one's got a 52.6 watt hour battery compared to the M1 Airs 49.9 watt hour battery. And I'm not sure if we'll see any real world battery benefits, but the M1 Air was already pretty much the best laptop out there in terms of battery life. So I'm sure the M2 Air will be just fine. Just like on the new MacBook Pros with M1 Pro and M1 Max, you've now got a MagSafe charging port on the new Air. And this is one feature that pretty much everyone expects to show up on the rest of the MacBook lineup, so this isn't a huge shocking revelation per se. And I gotta say, I haven't used MagSafe since my charger broke in October of last year, but maybe the new Air will get me back into it. And just for clarification, the new MacBook Air retains USB 4 and Thunderbolt 3, so no Thunderbolt 4 for now. And then lastly, you've got two new colors. You've got the Starlight color from the iPads coming in to replace the rose gold color, and then there's now an additional midnight color option. And this is probably the closest we'll ever get to a matte black MacBook ever again. But outside of that, these are really the only differences between the M1 Air and M2 Air. And keep in mind that the M2 Air is joining the M1 Air in the MacBook Air lineup. It's not gonna be directly replacing it. So you'll still be able to buy the M1 Air on Apple's website brand new. Now the M2 MacBook Pro has a lot less going for it in terms of new things being brought to the table.
cool because compared to the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, the only really noticeable difference is that M2 chip and the upgraded memory that comes with it. The webcam, speakers, display brightness, resolution, ports and battery capability are all the same. Apple literally just did a logic board swap and called it a day. And the M1 MacBook Pro was already a great laptop, so this isn't a huge deal in and of itself. But despite offering a weaker camera than the M2 Air and an older design, the M2 MacBook Pro is starting at $100 more than the MacBook Air starting at $1299. Now, a lot of people are wondering why Apple even continues to sell this 13 inch Pro model when the 14 and 16 inch models are arguably a lot more Pro. And the M2 MacBook Air honestly could be seen as a better buy depending on what you do with your Mac. And I honestly wish the answer was that simple, but I'm not sure why Apple is keeping the 13 inch Pro around. Perhaps they just had an excess of 13 inch MacBook Pro shells that they needed to get rid of. Either way, I don't really think this 13 inch Pro is gonna be around for too much longer with the current design and the touch bar and whatnot. If they do keep the 13 inch Pro model around to kinda be a cheaper alternative to the 14 inch Pro, I imagine we'll probably have it around for another year or so and then we'll get a redesigned model that can wholeheartedly justify the higher price compared to the M2. But then it makes me wonder, why didn't they just reveal a redesigned MacBook Pro now instead of just releasing an old design with a new chip in it alongside a redesigned machine? There's a lot of theories around that and some people like to think that Apple only wants to introduce one redesigned product per event and maybe they're trying to be consistent with that for whatever reason, but either way, it's, it's a jarring situation and I do think if the 13 inch MacBook Pro is gonna stick around, it's gonna get redesigned like probably in the next year or so. But if you're asking me which one makes more sense to buy right now, I definitely say the M2 Air, unless you just gotta have the touch bar and apparently there are people out there who find it incredibly useful. I'm not one of those people, but if you are, more power to you, my friend. The MacBook Air with M2 is clearly the shinier, newer looking machine compared to the MacBook Pro with M2, but perhaps there's some performance benefits that we're simply not aware of because we don't have either of these two laptops in hand yet, but best believe we'll be getting versions of these laptops in for review when they become Come available and we'll be doing all kinds of performance tests and comparisons to really figure out if the M2 MacBook Pro is worth the extra coins. So if you're excited for that, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.